live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Fortinet Accelerate 18. Brought to you by Fortinet. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage live from Fortinet Accelerate 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE, along with my co-host Peter Burris, and we're very excited to welcome a CUBE alumni back to theCUBE, Derek Menke, the global security strategist from Fortinet. Welcome back. Thank you, it's, it's, uh, it's always good to be here. We have great conversations, so I'm happy We do, well, we're, we're happy that you think that. So, um, lots of news coming out today, but I want to kind of start with maybe a top-down approach, the theme of the event, strength mm -hmm. in numbers. Yes. As a marketer, I'm like, oh, what are they going to share? And of <laughs> course, Ken and a lot of your peers shared a lot of interesting statistics. From your standpoint, what you're doing with, with FortiGuard Labs, strength in numbers, help us understand that from, from the technology standpoint. What does that mean sure, to you? Sure, sure, sure. So, um, there's a couple aspects to that. First of all, um, I've always been a firm advocate that we can never win the war on cybercrime alone. Uh, we have to be able to collaborate. A collaboration is a key aspect. Um, the, the attack surface today now, just from, if you look at the complexity of, of attacks, the attack surface is, is, is massive today and it's going to continue to expand. I mean, 15 years ago, we we're just dealing with you know, threats that would operate on, on IRC channels or some, you know, some websites and just some spam attacks. Now we have to deal with that in addition to this growing attack surface, right? Uh, specifically with IOT, IOMT, the Internet of Medical right, Things, yes. uh, OT as well. Uh, you have within that OT umbrella, obviously things like the connected vehicles and all of these different things, which I know you've seen here also mm -hmm. accelerate. Um, so wh when, when we look at that attack surface, you need security in all aspects, end to end, right? And so from a, uh, you know, from a, a security architecture for perspective, strength in numbers is important uh, to have that whole coverage of the attack surface, right? Uh, that's uh, not complex and easy to manage. At the same time, uh, being able to interoperate, that's another strength. Uh, you know, the, the more a, uh, a structure is bonded or glued together, the, the more you know, resilient it's going to become. That's the exact concept of the fabric, right? The more that we can interweave the fabric and connect the different nodes together and share intelligence, that becomes a much, much stronger uh, structure, right? So, so to me, the, the strength in numbers means collaboration, uh, information flow, and also end-to-end uh, -end coverage uh, between the security solutions too. Yeah. But it also means you know, the growing ecosystem, yeah. the, the need for additional expertise, greater specialization yeah. in people. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how, from a strategy standpoint, yeah. Fortinet is helping prepare people for different types of inclusion, different types of participation, Sure, and sure. what it means to be great in a security in a security way. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's very uh, it's um, we're, we're taking a multi-pronged approach to that. Uh, if you look at things like our NSC training program, uh, it's the largest in the industry. So training other experts through through our partners, uh, growing doing that knowledge transfer and expertise onto new features like we're doing here at Accelerate is uh, critically important. So that's that's one aspect uh, when you look at the ecosystem. When you look at something uh, for Forty Guard as an example, what we're doing we have have traditionally, you know, we've trained up a very large team. We have 215 security experts in FortiGuard, uh, which is one of the, for a network security um, uh, uh, organization, one of the largest in the world, if not the largest. And FortiGuard is a, a, a practical and active think tank, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's many things. It's it's reactive protection, it's proactive protection, it's uh, now we've just launched the FortiGuard AI as well, artificial intelligence, machine learning, that's all the threat intelligence aspect, so it's, it's threat detection and response. Uh, again, if you look at technology, uh, when we started just with antivirus and intrusion prevention and things like this, it was very uh, signature-based and reactive. We went from signature-based uh, detections to anomaly-based detections, now, the third generation of this is machine learning and deep learning. And you know, in going back to your question, uh, we're, we don't ever want to replace humans uh, because humans are uh, very important in this ecosystem. Uh, rather repurpose them, right? So what we're doing as an example is when we you know, train uh, our, our analysts, instead of having them do day-to-day -day tasks like you know, some signature creation or something like this, we can actually have AI systems replace that to um, identify a threat, respond to it. 
and then repurpose those humans for some more strategic, uh, you know, looking at the context. How bad is this threat? Why, why is it a threat? How do we respond to it? How do we work with partners and customers? We've launched our threat intelligence service as well. Uh, this is a good example of something that we've used internally within FortiGuard to protect customers. Now, uh, we're offering this as a service to customers for security operations centers, uh, we also have our 40 Analyzer product and the incident response framework. These are all key components that we're empowering uh, organizations to be able to respond to those threats. But again, strength in numbers. It's this ecosystem working together. So Fabric Ready Partners is another good example of that uh, strength in numbers, I think, too. Well, I remember the first time I walked into a knock uh, and found the security person and their eyes were literally bleeding. <laughs> Uh, and it's nice to have AI be able to take that kind of a load off to be looking at some of these challenges, or some of those, these anomalous things that previously we expected people to be able to uncover. Yeah, and it's, it's a, um, when we talk about AI, to me it's a trust exercise as well. Um, when you're talking about machine learning, uh, it's accuracy problem, right? How accurate can the machines really be? Uh, when we pass the torch, as I say, to the machines to be able to take on those day-to-day -day jobs, we have to be able to trust it saying, you're doing a good job and you're accurate. So we're using supervised learning, right, where we have uh, our, our human experts actually training the machines. That's a good use for them instead of just doing the same cycles day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, as an example. So um, that's another way that we're um, scaling out that way. I think it's absolutely required in today's day and age. Uh, we're, if you look at the numbers, it's an exponential curve right now. Um, last year, what, one year ago today, on, on average, we're seeing about a million hacking attempts in just a minute across uh, the, the entire globe, right? Uh, now we're seeing that number up over four million. So it's increased fourfold in just a year, and that's just going to continue to rise. So having that automated defense and AI and machine learning Machine learning is just the learning aspect, the AI is the actionable part, how we can take that intelligence and put that into the fabric so that the customer doesn't have to do that themselves. I mean, the customer doesn't always have to be involved in the security aspect of that. And that's how we start reducing the complexity too. You mentioned a couple of terms that, that I wanted to, to pivot on, and proactive, reactive. Yeah. One of the biggest challenges that we hear from the C-suite in this respect is visibility, um, complexity, but also high TCO reactivity. Mm. Where are where is Ford in, in, in enabling when you talk to customers that shift, that successful shift from reactive to proactive? Right. Yeah. Good. Good question. Very good question. I think there's parallels. I mean, they're both always going to have to exist. That's just the nature. I mean, if you keep on walking across, you know, it's like Frogger. If you keep on walking across a busy highway, you're going to get hit eventually because there's that much traffic, that much attacks coming, right? So again, the incident response angle, uh, using uh, detection systems and, uh, you know, threat reporting in the, this intelligence service to be able to uh, you know, alert on what sort of attacks are happening and how to prioritize that is one way on the reactive end. On a proactive end, uh, consulting, we have a team of consulting uh, engineers, uh, and specifically ones on 40 guards, so threat experts that are able to actually analyze. So we have programs like CTAP, it's a cyber threat assessment program, that is uh, able to go into these new networks as a free service and do assessments. So audits and assessments on the state of security on that, uh, on that network. End to end, right? So we're talking even up to the distributed enterprise level. That's very, very important because we're in a day and age of information overload. Uh, especially if you talk to, you know, most CISOs I talk to, they say, Derek, I got so much traffic being thrown at me. I have all these security logs that are lighting up. How do I prioritize and respond to that? So if you can understand who your enemy is, what they're up to, then you can start building an appropriate security strategy around that as opposed to just building checkbox and, and you know, building a fort and thinking you're protected against everything. That's a very uh, important part. And of course, there's, there's proactive security technologies, uh, anomaly-based, you know, things like sandbox detection that we've already integrated into the fabric ecosystem. But, but visibility is key first. Know your enemy, understand it, then build up a, a stack around that. So you're a strategist. Yes. What's the difference between a security strategist and a strategist, a business strategist, and with specifically, how is security strategy starting to find its way into business strategy? Good, really good question. Uh, so it's, it's becoming blended, right? Uh, because uh, security uh, is a vital part of business today. Um, so if you look at 
uh, some attacks that even happened last year. Uh, there's targeted attacks that are starting to go after big businesses, uh, critical revenue streams and services, um, because these are high payouts, right? And so, you know, if you look at a, uh, you know, building a business, you have to identify uh, what are your digital assets that can include services, intellectual property, and what would happen if <laughs> that service was, you know, if there's a de denial of service attack on that. How much bleed or revenue loss are you going to have versus the cost of implementing a, a you know an adequate um, security structure around that? So, um, you know, security is a board level discussion right now, right? And so, when it, I think when you look at building out these businesses, security should be uh, by design from 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 the top down. Let's start. But is it finding its way? And we've asked this question a couple of times, at least I have. Is it finding its way into hey, my balance, sheet, my balance sheet is a source of competitive advantage. My sales force is a source of competitive advantage. Is your security cap capabilities a source of competitive advantage in a digital business? Uh, I, I would say uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, it's starting to find its way in there. If you look at regions like Australia, uh, you know, they, they just implemented a new mandatory breach disclosure, right? So in any business is turning, I think it's over $2 million uh, in revenue, uh, need to uh, you know, have a certain security posture in place and be able to respond to that. And that's trust and brand recognition. So because having, a, you know, in cases like this, building trust with your provider, especially if we talk about you know, cloud services, I'm putting my data into your hands and trust, um, how well do you trust that? Of course, if there's good reputation and a powerful security solution, um, you know, customers are going to feel safer doing that. It's like, are you going to you know, put your gold in Fort Knox or are you going to put it, you know, bury it in your backyard? Um, there's, there's, there's a definite relationship happening there, I think, yeah. I read, uh, no, I didn't read this report, but I saw it the other day, in 2017 kind of, um, a cyber crime report that said by 2021, which isn't that far away, that the uh, global impact will be six trillion dollars in cyber crime. Yeah, yeah. How do you see the public sector, the private sector working together to help mitigate that where, where that cyber crime is concerned and, and the costs that are so varied and large? And, yeah, uh, it's not just cyber crime either, it's cyber terrorism. These other assets, especially if you're talking about public sector, uh, if you're talking about critical infrastructure, and, and right. also with uh, you know energy sector and, and and operational technology and all these things too, um, so you know it's it becomes very important uh, for doing uh, collaboration and alliances. That's something that's actually close to my heart. You know, at, at Fortinet and, and FortiGuard, we've um, we formed several strategic um, partnerships and alliance with public sector, uh, mostly you know national computer emergency response, because we feel that. We have a lot of intelligence. Uh, we're very good at what we do. You know, we can uh, protecting customers, detecting threats. Uh, but if there's an attack happening on a national level, you know, uh, we should be able to empower to, to be able to work together to to combat the threat. It's the same thing even with um, cybercrime, right? Uh, so as an example, we work with law enforcement as well with cybercrime, uh, look trying to find threat actors in the adversary. Cyber criminals are running their own business and the more expensive you can make it for them to operate, it, it uh, slows down their, their operations. Um, uh, interesting, a COGS approach to competition. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and um, you know, they're always going to find the path of least resistance, right? That's the whole idea of security strategy too is, we call it the, the attack chain, right? It's like layered security. That's the strength in numbers theme again, right? End-to-end -end security that makes it, um, uh, the whole security chain stronger because um, of that bond, and, and that makes it more yeah, expensive for the cyber criminals to operate too. Um, so, as an example, like I said, national cert, law enforcement, uh, we're even teaming up in the, um, in the private sector, a cyber threat alliance as well. That's been a, a very successful project. Um, Fortinet's a founding member. Uh, I'm on the steering committee of the cyber it threat alliance. It was Ken's brainchild, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we're competitors uh, in the industry, but we're actually, it's a friendly environment <laughs> when we meet and uh, it's actionable intelligence that's being shared. Um, again, it comes down to how well can you implement that technology or that uh, uh, information in your technology. That's an important part. Yeah. So here we are at Accelerate 2018. This, Captain Ken was saying the 16th year of this event. What are you looking forward to in 2018 
for Fortinet, looking at the strength of the partners, those behind us, mm. what's exciting you about the opportunities that Fortinet has in 2018? Uh, it's never a boring day. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting opportunities to work with. I think it's, what's exciting to me is the vibe. Um, uh, People are, are are very keen on this, right? They're, they're very, uh, you know, if you look at our Fabric Ready program, it's growing quite significantly, uh, and I think it's fantastic. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, that that are um, energized and, and willing to work in these programs. Uh, there's a lot of programs we can build out specifically with FortiGuard as well. Like I said, these threat intelligence services that we're offering to to our partners now. Um, which include, you know, proactive alerts, early warning systems. Um, that that empowerment and doing, you know, working together, uh, is uh, d definitely excitement. There's a lot of opportunities there, um, and there's going to be a lot of, you know, challenges to overcome. If we look at the uh, threat landscape right now. Uh, you know, one thing I'm talking about is uh, swarm bots. So this is swarm intelligence. So there's parallels here again. We talk about strength in numbers and what we're doing uh, on our side. The bad guys are also teaming up and doing strength in numbers on their side too. Uh, so we're looking at, on the horizon, threats like this that are, uh, that are using, leveraging their own learning mechanisms, being able to self-adapt to be much quicker to attack systems, right? Because that's on the horizon, we're already seeing indications of that. Uh, we have to get this right. Um, I think for the first time in the industry, you know, we, we're doing this right. Um, you know, if you look at uh, years past, cyber criminals, they can do a million things <laughs> wrong and they don't care, right? Uh, so we need to be able to uh, overcome more hurdles if we work together, um, which we're doing right now. I think for the first time, we have the opportunity to have an advantage over the cyber criminals too. So that's also exciting. Definitely, we've heard a lot of, I think, conversation today along the spirit of collaboration, compatibility. So that sentiment, I think, was, was well represented on, from your peers that we've spoken with today. Yeah. Everybody has a part to play, I think, right? And that's the thing, you mentioned the word ecosystem, and that's exactly what it is, right? Um, and, and that's another brilliant thing we're finding, is that everybody brings some strength to the table. Um, so that's another aspect, and I think people, you know, uh, are, are realizing that, organizations are realizing that, that, that they can actually play in, in these uh, collaborations. It's not a zero-sum game. No. It's no. not, I mean, you know, there's, there's so much diversity and so much opportunity, this digital transformation is going to have touch so many different corners in so many different ways. Yeah. But at this point in time, it's how fast can we all work together to take advantage of the opportunities and not, eh, I want that piece and I want that piece because then the whole thing won't grow as fast. Yeah, and uh, you know, the other challenge is the, te uh, the technology challenge and that's something we are addressing as well. Like we're actually creating a solution to this framework uh, as we did with the Cyber Threat Alliance but also with the, uh, the, the Fabric program as well. So. Having that, those, those tools uh, is very important, I think, as well, to help grow that ecosystem, right? Exciting stuff. Derek, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE and sharing some of the things that you're working on, and it sounds like, uh, like you said earlier, never a dull moment, every day is a busy uh, day. Absolutely not, no, yeah. There's, there's uh, a long road ahead, I think there always will be, but like I said, it's a lot of exciting times, and uh, it's good to see progress in the industry. Absolutely, right? yeah. well thanks for your time, we look forward to our chat next year, and to see what happens then. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely, we want to thank you for watching theCUBE's continuing coverage of Fortinet Accelerate 2018. For Peter Burris, I'm Lisa Martin, we'll be right back after a short break.